Hello, my name is Abe, and I'm going to show you how to make a mod for Mod the Gungeon, for Enter the Gungeon. This is going to be a very simple mod, but it should give you the basics that you need in order to get something running in Gungeon. From that point, you can choose to make the mod do whatever you want, but everyone needs a place to start. So, the first thing you need to do is make sure that Mod the Gungeon is actually installed. You will need to do that before you can make a mod for it, of course. You also need to download and install Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition, .NET Edition, C Sharp Edition, whatever they end up calling it, that's what you're going to need. This is what you're going to want to download. .NET Community Visual Studio 2017, or whatever the current version is. Once Visual Studio is installed, we're going to want to make a new project. You want to make sure that you're creating a class library, and then change the name of the library to whatever you want to make your mod be called. We're just going to use something simple, Gungeon Mod Test should be fine. And then make sure that the framework is set to 3.5. .NET Framework 3.5. Visual Studio will create all of the necessary files for you. On the left, we have the code for the currently open file, class 1, just the default class that's created for us. And on the right, you have the Solution Explorer, which shows you all the properties, references, and files that exist in your project. We want to start by adding a new file, and we want to add in a text file. We're going to call it metadata.txt. And in the file, you're going to want to put all of this. The name, the version, DLL, and depends base 02. The DLL and the name, you're going to want to change to be whatever you called your project. Gungeon Mod Test is what I call this project. You're going to want to change that to whatever you typed in when you named the project in the File New Project window. With this file being created, you can close it and go back to your class1.cs. There's one more bit of setup that we need to do before we can actually make the mod, and that is to go back to the Solution Explorer, go to References, right-click and say Add Reference. Then browse and find your Enter the Gungeon install on your computer. Go to Enter the Gungeon, ETG Data, Managed, and select Assembly C Sharp.dll and click Add. OK. What this does is it adds a reference to all of the Mod the Gungeon and Enter the Gungeon code so that you can interact with it. We will be immediately using this because we need to edit our class. In order for it to be loaded by Mod the Gungeon, it needs to extend ETG module. Now notice the red squiggly lines underneath class 1. We need to add in a start, an init, and an exit method to our class, which is how Mod the Gungeon is going to initialize our mod, and how all of our code is going to be executed from those three functions. So we're going to create our first function, public override void init. Add the parentheses, and just get rid of anything that's created by default, because we don't need it. Public override void start is the other function that we need to make. And the last one is public override void exit. When our mod is loaded by mod the gungeon, each method will be called at a particular point in time. While the init and start methods are both called once each, there is a difference between them. All mods will have their init methods called, and then all mods will have their start methods called. In this way, if you want to initialize something internal to your mod, you would do that in init. If for some reason you wanted to interact with another mod, you would do that in start after that mod has had a chance to initialize itself. But all we care about is just making sure that our mod is working. So we're just going to make a very simple command, which will allow us to write something to the log file for the game. And if we can just write a message, we'll know that our mod is actually functioning. So we're just going to make a quick test line here, Gungeon mod, Gungeon mod test dot init. And we're going to do the same thing for the start method. We can do the same thing for the exit method, but that will actually just never be called as far as I can tell. So if we look in the log file for the game, we should be able to see init be called for all of the different mods that are installed, and then start called for all of the different mods that are installed. And if we can see this test line in the log file, we know that our mod is being run in Mod the Gungeon, in Enter the Gungeon, and then from here, we can make whatever we want to have happen in the game happen. So, 
Let's build our mod. You might get this error. The primary reference blah 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 cannot be resolved because it is an indirect dependency blah 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 blah. This might be a common error, you might not get this error, it seems to be a little bit random, but there is a way of fixing it. What you want to do is go back to your references on the right side of the screen in your Solution Explorer, click Assembly C Sharp, and click the Properties tab on the very far right. There should be an option called Specific Version, which you want to make true, and then hit the Save All command in your top bar. Attempt to build the mod again. If you get the same error, then we will need to make another change to our project files. So find your project files in Windows and find the .cs proj file. Open this in whatever your favorite text editor may be. You're going to want to find this line, the one that says reference include assembly C sharp. And underneath it, you're going to want to add in this text here. Specific version, true, specific version with the slash next to it. Save the file, go back to Visual Studio, and it should prompt you to reload all changes. Hit reload all, rebuild your project, and it should succeed at this point. Now that our mod has been compiled, we can package it and put it in the Mod the Gungeon directory. Go back to your project directory in Windows and go to bin debug. There should be a file called Gungeon Mod Test, or whatever you called your project, .dll. You're going to want to make a zip file of this single DLL file. So use whatever zip program you have on your computer, create the zip file, and just move this to your base directory for a moment. Because you're going to want to add in the metadata.txt file to this zip file that we've created. Now that we've added both the DLL and the metadata, we can just cut the file. Go to our mod directory in Enter the Gungeon and paste it. I already have the sprite replacement mod and my own mod installed, but we're going to also install this custom mod that we are making right now. If you have a relink cache in a mods.txt file, just delete these. You need to delete these every time you change this mods directory. With that done, we should just be able to launch the game and see our mods in action. Now we won't actually be able to see anything necessarily because our mod currently isn't doing anything. The only thing our mod should be doing is outputting something to a text file. So open up your favorite text editor and load the Enter the Gungeon log file, which is called output log and exists in C users your name app data local low dodge roll enter the gungeon output log.txt. This is the log file for the entire game. There is often a lot of information in this log file, but we know what we're looking for. Gungeon mod test. So search for that and you should be able to find various lines that have that text in this log file. Initializing mod zip. Mod initialized. And if we look further, we can see that our test init method was called, as was the init method from the other mod that is currently installed. And then we can see that the start method was called, as was the start method for the other mod that was installed. So there we have it, a mod that compiles and runs in Enter the Gungeon. But it doesn't really do that much right now, it just outputs a couple of messages and that's it. If you're going to want to write a mod that interacts with Gungeon in any meaningful way, you're going to need to know what currently exists in Gungeon. You're going to want to know what the enemies are, what their properties are, how to interact with them. And in order to do that, you would probably want to find and install some sort of a DLL viewing program. I like to use DNSpy, which allows you to view DLL files and see what's inside of them. And you are going to need to know what is inside the game in order to mod it. So if you have DNSpy, just say file open, go to the same directory where Enter the Gungeon is installed, and select the assembly C sharp.dll file. Inside this contains all of the code for Enter the Gungeon that exists in C sharp. There's a lot of it, but luckily there is a way to easily search your way through all of this mess. Simply go to Edit, Search Assemblies, and type something in. For example, what if we wanted to learn more about the chest teleporter item? 
Well, let's do a search for chest teleporter and see what shows up. Oh hey, there actually does exist an item called chest teleporter item. We can take a look at it. We can see that it is an item that extends player item. It has methods for pickup, dropping, destroying, for what handling what happens when you launch a new floor in Gungeon. It has a method for finding the boss foyer room on a floor, for actually spawning in chests that are contained within itself, and other such methods. All of the specific code for the chest teleporter is contained here, and you can look at it and dissect it as much as you would like. Let's take another example. I happen to know where the game determines what floors to load in for Boss Rush. That's in the Game Manager. If we go to the Game Manager and just search for Boss Rush, we should be able to find the list of floors for Boss Rush. Castle, Gungeon, Mines, Catacombs, and the Forge. So how would you go about using this information to modify something? There are three primary ways you will interact with and modify the game. The first is by editing the game prefabs. A prefab is just a game object from which other copies are made. All of the game's items, for instance, exist as prefabs that can be modified, and when you modify a prefab, any copies in the future will inherit the changes that you make. You can search through all of the loaded objects and prefabs by using the Unity Engine Resources class. In order to use Unity Engine code, we need to first add a reference to it. So add reference, browse, find your game directory once again, and then load the Unity Engine core module file. With this loaded, we should be able to access Unity Engine dot resources dot find objects of type all and we can search for whatever type of an object we want to find for this particular example why don't we try to find some particular gun in the game you can use this code to search through all instances of particular objects in the game in our instance guns looking for the bubble blaster we know that the bubble blaster has an id of 599 from other sources and the reason why the Bubble Blaster can only have 10 bullets on the screen at a time is because of the max number alive modifier component that is attached to the gun. We can search for that component on the gun, change the number of max bullets that can be in the air at once, and this is all you need to do in order to change that effect of the Bubble Blaster. This code is run in the init method of our mod, meaning that it will be run only once and at the beginning of the game. In this example, I use Unity Engine.resources, but there are usually multiple ways that you can accomplish a goal in Mod the Gungeon. For instance, instead of doing this, we could just use Gungeon.game.items.getBubbleBlaster. Well, as soon as we do that, this will get the gun prefab for us just off of the name instead of the ID number. But it will accomplish the same goal. The prefab will be edited, and because our mod is running at the very beginning of the game, all instances of Bubble Blaster in the game will have this change applied to it. The second way you can modify the game is by using ETG Mod hooks. Whenever a matching object or component is created, ETG Mod will call your method so that you can modify the object that was just created. But I have two problems with this method. The first is that the ETG Mod hook will only work for an exact type match. You can't just hook all Unity Engine objects. You have to hook something specific like Punch-Out Controller or Playmaker FSM, which is in red here because it is not currently being referenced. But even then, the second reason why I'm not the biggest fan of ETG Mod hooks is that sometimes the hooks just don't work anyways. If you want to use a hook so that your code is executed whenever a new object is created of a particular type, always check to make sure it works. If it doesn't work, you might have to find some other way of accomplishing what you are trying to do. The third way to modify the game is by using runtime detour hooks. What you do is you identify a method anywhere in the game code and you can hook it so that your code executes instead of the original game code. Then you can change whatever you want, wherever you want it, whenever you want. You have to download the runtime detour files from GitHub, and you have to add two files to your references. You'll need to add both runtime detour and utils.dll from Monomod. 
Also, be sure to add those two DLL files to the zip file that is your mod. With our new code added, we will add in the missing using references by using the Quick Actions button on the left for both Runtime Detour and System.Reflection. These will get added at the top of your project file and simply reference what we've already added in the references. What this hook will accomplish is it will find a particular method inside of a particular class in the original game files and replace it with our own method in our own class. You have to make sure that public, non-public, instance, and static matches both of the methods. If the game method is a static method, make sure this says static. And if it is a public method, make sure the binding flag is set to public, not non-public. Finally, if your method is a instance method, make sure that you have a handle to your object as the third parameter of the hook. In order to create our replacement method, we're going to start by going back to dnspy, identifying the function that we are replacing, copying the definition of the function, the first line, and we're going to make our new function follow the same definition as this original function. It looks like this i enumerator is missing, but using system.collections should resolve that problem. Let's start by making sure that the function name is the same as the one that we are going to give it in the get method call of our hook. I jumped ahead for a moment just because there's a lot that we need to talk about regarding the method that we are creating that replaces the original in-game method. The important things to note is that we have two new parameters in our method declaration. This parameter, Game Manager self is a reference to the actual Game Manager instance that had the original method called upon it because it was an instance function. If this was a static function, there would not be a Game Manager self here. It would just be empty. The func that is called orig for original is the original method that was called that is no longer active. Our method has replaced it. If we want, we can actually still call the original method, which allows us to make a modification to the original function call, but not actually change any of the method code itself. What if we, for instance, wanted to just load the next boss rush target floor? We can do that by just editing the parameters that are being sent to the original function. Or if we wanted to, we could replace all of the original code and make whatever changes we want. If we wanted to, instead of loading the castle first, we could load the gungeon first, or we could load the forge first in boss rush mode, if that is what we actually wanted to do. We can make whatever changes we want. Now you will have to figure out how to repair the code because this is not the correct this object. This is what the self object is for. But fixing those types of issues is outside of the extent of this video. This is all about just getting you on the right path. One final thing to note is that it is a func as the first parameter of our replacement method because we are returning an i enumerator. If we had no return value on this function, if it was a void, then this would not be a func. It would just be an action and the i enumerator inside the action would be removed. If you don't understand any of this, just read up on func and action. Read up on Unity, how objects and components work. Read up on the runtime detour hooks and how those work. And if you want any further examples, feel free to take a look at other mods and other code. This is what the DN Spy here is for. If you want to see how something works, you can just view it in the Hallowed mod, for instance. How do I allow the fire button to reload turbocharger? All of that code exists here for you to look at, so feel free to look at it. It might seem like a lot of information to take in, but this should get you started on modding the Gungeon. You might need to look up a lot of information, but that's okay. This should get you started on creating mods.